By the mid 2000s, Naughty Dog's most recent game up to that point was Jack X Combat Racing. Considering another certain Naughty Dog franchise also had a kart racer, one of the best of all time, theoretically there will be a kart racer for Uncharted in the future if they're not working on the Crash Bandicoot remakes, which they should, but point being, Naughty Dog had a rep for making high quality 3D platformer franchises for all ages, and the PlayStation 3 was around the corner. Even though they were making another platformer, Naughty Dog made the daring choice to target an older audience with guns and human characters, as if the Crash Bandicoot fans had grown up, which seems appropriate for the capabilities the PS3 had. The developers took a lot of inspiration from movies like Indiana Jones, National Treasure, and video games like Tomb Raider, with some nicknaming this new game Dude Raider. No, it's called Uncharted Drake's Fortune, which was released between November and December 2007, exclusively for the PlayStation 3. Nathan Drake is on a quest to search for the lost treasure in El Dorado, supposedly found by his ancestor Sir Francis Drake. The first thing he finds is his coffin with a notebook inside, which comes in handy while on an island getting caught up by rival treasure hunters, puzzles and booby traps. Drake's companions include longtime mentor Victor Sullivan and journalist slash future wife Elena Fisher. I saw the way you were eyeing her. Elena? Please. I snuffed any chance with her the second we ditched her on that dock. <laughs> hey! In terms of character development, it's minimal at best. I mean, I already forgot the names of the villains just a few days after I beat this game. Nathan Drake is likeable, don't get me wrong, and being Sir Francis Drake's descendant is a pretty cool idea. To me, he's the combination of Indiana Jones, Johnny Knoxville, and Jackie Chan. It's like Drake is having fun on the quest despite being in harm's way all the time. But when I played Uncharted for the first time, I thought of him as just another random treasure hunter who always thinks he's ahead of everything. But what Drake lacks in character development makes up for it with his cocky personality, which creates chemistry between his supporting crew, who are nearly just as likable. That's for leaving me at the dock. The best character in this game is the presentation. The landscape, buildings, and caves on the uncharted islands in El Dorado, South America look so gorgeous. A lot of attention to detail has been put in the graphics department, especially for an early PlayStation 3 title, and it looks even better on the PlayStation 4. There really isn't much else to say because I can't find anything to criticize. Occasionally you get texture pop-ins, but overall, the production value is profound. It's like playing an interactive summer blockbuster. Who needs superhero movies when you have this? But like any video game, it's all about the actual gameplay. To be fair, the controls are fine for the most part. However, it has its fair share of baffling moments. Firstly, this came out in 2007, which means it relies too heavily on the six-axis motion, evident when balancing on narrow ledges and throwing grenades. Another reason why I would recommend the PlayStation 4 Nathan Drake collection. And secondly, when you're on a jet ski, you can't move while aiming your gun. I know it doesn't sound like much, but when you're in a position where you're shot at or close to an exploding barrel on a waterfall, it's a real problem. Aside from those annoyances, there's so much Nathan Drake can do. The shooter mechanics feel pretty similar to Gears of War with its cover system and options of blind or aim fire. And when you're hurt, just stay in cover until health regenerates. But unlike Gears of War, acrobatic Drake can climb and swing his way to tough spots. I wonder how many broken ledges Drake has left in his path. When leaping onto platforms, movement can be pretty touchy. Combining the fact that the button layout is completely different from your everyday third-person shooter, it's going to take some time to get used to, but at least it's not broken. Just make sure you time your shot perfectly because the enemies take way too many bullets than they should. Oh, come on! Now this would be fine if you have enough ammo, but most of the time you don't. Granted, carrying over 300 bullets for an AK-47, another 200 for a pistol and a pocket minigun all at once sounds unrealistic. But this is a video game where the main protagonist has more close moments than Michael Jordan, and he seems very casual about it. Wouldn't call that realistic. Uh, and what if you can't tell the difference? Then, my friend, you are in big trouble. Plus, the enemies throw grenades and surround you like a team. This is definitely among the smartest AI in a video game, so be careful. <laughs> Come on. I always am. Ah! I did not see that! 
It can be really frustrating going through a wave of enemies on occasion. And don't get me started on the last chapter. If you get a gold trophy for beating this on normal, then I don't think it was designed to be easy. And when it comes to keeping quiet, forget it. Pretend it's an 80s action film because it's impossible. This game takes inspiration from some of those films anyway. Once there are no enemies shooting at you and laughing at your corpse, yeah they do that, you also have to solve a few puzzles whether it be a secret passage or ledges that are platformable. Okay that's not a real word but it should be. This is also when Drake refers to the notebook for clues. Gameplay time is pretty short. It only took me about 7 hours to beat. It would have been nice to give me a reason to play it again. I guess that's what sequels are for. The closest thing to replayability is achievement hunting or treasure hunting. That's about it. I guess having a linear gameplay style like this means the only way to beat it is your own skill, which is even more satisfying when the credits roll. I like that it has both shooter and platforming mechanics, but there are barely any moments where it mixes the two genres together. Really, most of the game is shoot some bad guys, explore, leap on different platforms, shoot, jump around, gun, leap, rinse, and repeat at different locations. What you get with Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a journey through exotic locations shooting bad guys, taking leaps of faith, solving puzzles, and making smart ass comments. Die now, or help you, and die later. That's oh, a tough call, but you know what? I'll take die now. Despite it being short and linear, there's actually a lot to do. There was so much potential in this series which would be fully realized in the sequels. But Uncharted Drake's Fortune gets a 7.5 out of 10. If you're looking to get into the Uncharted series, this is a good way to start, even if it isn't perfect. Whether you have a PS3 or 4, Uncharted is a staple series that every PlayStation gamer should try at least once.